Very good afternoon. Welcome from me to the third of our five programmes from the Crucible in Sheffield at the Embassy World Championship today. It's the day of the quarterfinals. Just the last eight left in now, and there's the champion Stephen Hendry starting out this afternoon against the Welshman Darren Morgan. Keep you in touch with that. Nigel Bond, last year's runner-up, has gone two up this morning against Dave Harold. Ronnie O'Sullivan, who I'm sure you know by now, has been allowed to continue in the championship despite an assault on a WPBSA official. He has been heavily fined in a two-year suspended sentence, but he plays on. And this morning he went two frames behind John Higgins, who, with O'Sullivan, is joint second favourite for the title. And then an intriguing confrontation, which we're going to start with, Steve Davis and Peter Ebden. Steve Davis has now won an unprecedented 52 matches here in the Crucible. The last two, the struggle against Willie Thorne and the marathon against Terry Griffiths. His last title in 1989. As for Peter Ebden, well, you'll see he's actually ranked number 10. That's how they start out. But this season, he's rap rapidly rising. He's up to provisionally fourth in the, the snooker world. He's had a couple of quarter-final appearances here and had an easy victory with Dino Kane. Tremendous match here yesterday and last night. Jimmy White, 13-12. One of the best matches we've seen here for many, many years in the Crucible. And he holds a bit of a record over Steve Davis. He came here and uh, knocked Steve Davis out in the first round back in 92. And Davis has only twice lost in the first round since he won his last title in 1989. So, live coverage of that one in this programme this afternoon. We'll go straight into the Crucible. And uh, the commentators on the match will be John Spencer and Clive Everton. Alan Chamberlain's the referee. Peter Ebden, as you can see, has taken the opening frame. Won it well, 78-14 with a break of 32. Davis ahead in this one and uh, studying the situation. Clive. Yes. A faster flowing second frame than the first was. <laughs> which was of uh, 37 minutes duration. No risks were taken. Many thoughts were thought. 39. Many alternatives were contemplated. But uh, scoring was slow, even if Ebden did most of it. 1-0 he leads, but now sitting out a promising effort from the six times champion. 46. Well, on the hit that one, wanted it to be straight on this red into the right corner. Davis, 46. Yes, and that's what happens when you just run out of position. A bit fortunate the Reds have gone rather awkward for Peter. Although he has one into his left hand black pocket.
So Peter getting back into this frame. 14. He'll do very well to win it at this visit. And he has an outside chance. I think he can take the red and the right cent into the left centre. Now he wants an angle on the blank to be able 15. to disturb that red. Looks as though he may have finished two straight. his strategy out and it looks as though he's going to play to pop the black and now play a snooker behind that brown have liked to have laid a tactical snooker there. <laughs> Blue, the saving ball for Davis there, as he anticipated. Receiving angle. One. Yes, and that was a great pot, but no colour available. And he's 19 points behind. And to me, the shot to play is looking at the brown, which looks a little risky. I think he should be bringing that green off the side cushion and bringing the white down behind the black. thinking John Peter Ebden one not quite hard enough I think Steve can get through to the yellow but now of course Although Steve's 19 points in front, if Peter can pot this yellow with the colours now all in the middle of the table, could easily win it at one visit. Loose safety from Davis.
two. Well, they have the per perfect angle here. Drop the green in. And as long as he doesn't finish too straight on the brown, I fancy him to clear the table here. Yes, and that looks pretty good. Right angle on the brown. Must stay below the brown, however. The pink being on the black spot. Nine. Davis's loose safety has provided Ebden with the winning opening. Twenty-seven and the frame. It's taken sixty-seven minutes, but Peter Ebden leads Steve Davis by two frames to nil. Dennis Taylor is here watching this one with me here this afternoon. Um, Dennis, of course, Steve Davis had a couple of days off since uh, his marathon against Terry Griffiths. But Peter Ebden's had to come here straight after that tremendous match last night. You were commentating on the whole lot of it. Yeah, I worked on the whole match and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed every session, the three sessions. Some fantastic mm. snooker and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy White played some of the best snooker I've seen for quite some time and I thought he was going to win the match mm. at one stage. We talk about the high intensity of Peter Ebden. Every time he plays a frame or even a shot, it looks like he's going to win the World Championship. Some of the people last night may uh, not have seen this uh, this afternoon. This is Ebden. It's the end of the 19th frame, which he looked like he was going to lose. He needs the pink to win it. Watch this and listen. Six. Come on! On the frame, on! Peter Ebden. I thought he was Gary Glitter for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand. He was very subdued in the match. He didn't, didn't react like that on, on any of the other frames. Mm. But that was the big frame. Had Jimmy White have won that frame, um, I think he would be playing today and not uh, Peter Ebden. He knew how important that was because Jimmy would have went 11-8 in front. And I think Peter just released all these emotions and tensions there. He knew that was the frame for him. This is going to be his problem, though, isn't it? To keep this sort of going all the time, every frame, every match, right the way through, if he can get through any further. I think he possibly can do it because he's been to the quarterfinal a couple of times, so he, mm. you know, he, he's got himself. He's a very fit. He seems to keep himself very fit anyway. And uh, against Steve Davis, Steve's going to have to play. He's going to have to raise his game. With all due respect to, to Willie Thorne, who played quite well, and Terry. I think he's got a different uh, player in Peter Ebden here who, uh, who looks very good and Steve's got, uh, he's got to raise his game to be able to beat Peter Ebden here. <coughs> right, so Peter Ebden then, 2-0 up, Thank just for money over, this is a quarter-final, still the best of Steve 25, <coughs> and Steve Davis to break off. Steve Davis did... Uh, very well to beat his first two opponents, Willie Thorne and Terry Griffiths. He was 8-5 down to Thorne, came back to win 10-8. And eight times he was the odd frame behind against Terry Griffiths and came through to win 13-8. But those are both players of his generation. And this is a player, an opponent of the rising generation and uh, rising pretty fast at that. 10th at the start of the season, and he's going to end it third or fourth.
We should also remember that in the nine preceding world ranking events this season, Davis has reached only one quarter final and has had four first round defeats. He has made an enormous effort to get his game together again for the Crucible and to some extent has done so. <coughs> but uh, it's going to be a huge battle if he's going to get through to the semi-finals. No attempt at the long red. Just stunning towards the bunch for safety. Particularly in the early stages of matches, Davis adopts a no-risk policy, almost a spoiling policy. Ebden anxiously checks there whether the brown is preventing Davis at getting getting at the easy red over the left middle. Ebden's safety a little short of weight. Peter Ebden will prob probably be pleased that he's only got to play one session today. He played two long ones back to back yesterday against Jimmy White, afternoon and evening, and went the full distance to win 13 12, making a total clearance of 123 in the decider. Yes, and Peter's going to be taking this red on in the left hand corner. The only one he could leave would be the ready taking. Not the best of shots from Steve. Push the red over the left corner. But nothing easy for Peter. The reds, the pink and black tied up. And it's difficult co to control the white when the red's over the pocket like this. Managed with the use of check side to avoid cannoning the bunch of reds. <coughs> We're looking at a man who has the psychological profile of a champion, a wonderful competitor, very tenacious when he's trailing. and uh, has the killer instinct Six. when the chance comes to close out a match. Seven. 
Well, it didn't look as though the pink was available from here. But the fact that it is makes this a better opportunity for Peter. Just waiting to see if it will go on its own spot now. And if it doesn't, it'll go in a direct line. There you are at the back of the reds. As close to that red without touching. Thirteen. Well, choice for Peter this time. One of those reds above the black will go into the right corner. But I don't know, I think we may see Peter this time going to the pack of reds to try and bring the pink into play. Preferred to wait. And uh, may be right to do so with uh, still two easily potable reds available. Twenty. Not back the desired side of the blue this time though. Obviously, the right hand red there will go into this corner pocket. And this time, we will be bringing the pink into play. <coughs> and that's a good 26. shot. Alan Chamberlain stepping forward to clean the cue ball. Just back from a stint as tournament director of a tour event in Malaysia, hence his late arrival at the Crucible. If his intended red was straight to right corner, I don't think uh, that we'd have had to think like this. He would have just potted it and stayed on the pink. Thirty-two. But even off a relatively straight angle, that was a good hold for pink there. Yes, yeah, certainly an excellent shot. Could easily have overhit that one. Mm -hmm. 
certainly punishing Steve for his mistakes. Forty-six. Peter, just 52. asking for the cue ball and the red to be clean. Yes, by removing this red right of picture, he'll make other balls potable into the same pocket later in this break. Yes, it's been a pretty good break, this. Certainly wasn't straightforward. Worked pretty hard at it, but now he has an outside chance of clinching the frame. Going for the pink or the blue. Fifty-three. It's taken him ten minutes to make fifty-three, but there have been quite a few problems to think about and shot sequences to plan <coughs> yes and this could be the big shot of the break 59 you certainly be bringing the black into play I'm thinking it'd be a deep screw off the red onto the black and down for the pink or blue. Peter Ebden, 59. Lost his queuing a bit there, trying to generate the extra power. Ebden tried to develop the black with the shot that he missed, but it's still awkwardly situated for break building. Not after this shot, though. Seven.
Well, obviously the bike will still pot when it's spotted. 15. So the only really awkward ball on the table is this red near the left cushion. 16. It's important for Davis to win this frame. 3 0 down wouldn't be a great crisis in a best of 25. But uh, in a match like this, you tend to get a series of small crises. 23. And if they're not rectified, suddenly you've got a big one. 24. 31. So this is an important shot. Has to get on the colour. Touch of ways to try and drop behind that red, or he may even try to bring the white round behind the black and bring that red out into play now off this red. 32. No, didn't risk that. But he's got the best obtainable position. 39. Yes, played a great shot there. And has the angle to just bring that white away from the cushion. We'll probably be going down for the blue. Steve Davis. Well, 39. he certainly can't afford to miss those sort of chances. <laughs> that was a frame winner. Yes, there were no obvious problems following that. 1. And no obvious problems now for Ebden to clinch the frame. Just blue and yellow would do it. Didn't expect that. Six. No, yeah, that's about the first mistake we've seen from Peter for some time. So that was a bad mistake. No, it'll be hit and hope. And he'll be Peter quite Edward. happy with that Six. shot. <coughs> yes, he knows that he should have clinched the frame there. Great shot. And Peter can probably just about have the angle to get off the left hand cushion down for the yellow. But this is fraught with danger. Has to play it with a, a bit of speed, whichever way you play so it. And it's trying off three cushions. If he misses this, he could soon give a free ball. Four. 
foul. And that's a free ball. That was always going to be the problem. Four. And a free ball. Steve Davis. So that means that Steve can now take the blue, which will count as two points, an extra yellow. Well, Steve, given this a lot of thought, but the Steve Davis of old would have already been down and knocked this blue in. Has to take the, this on. Awkward bridging for the green. Seven. But now that he's managed to stun out for Brown, a hot favourite. Eleven. This is a frame that Ebden should have won until he lost position in potting the blue. Playing for yellow. 16. Ebden <coughs> knows he should have been 3-0 up. who makes the necessary clearance to reduce Ebden's lead to 2-1. Behind now at 3-2. And it's been a... ...just above the black in. Cannon into the red just to the right of the black. 12. That will really open up the black, the black spot area. Twenty. Twenty one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Nice angle on the black. I don't know about the two reds on the left of the table. He's just having a look now to see if they're available and maybe one at the top of the cluster. I think you'd prefer to play on the open reds. Well, as you can see, the one on the top of the cluster does go in this left corner. So he doesn't have to take a chance just yet to try and open up that pack of reds.
36. Thirty-seven. Well, I was a little bit surprised he played for that red, but it's okay. And of course, the fact that he removed that red also 40. makes the blue available into both centre pockets. But I think he needs a good angle on the blue off this red now. Forty-one. Well, certain this time to pop the blue and go into the cluster. Always need a little bit of luck, but not many people play this shot better than Steve Davis. Pop the blue, cannon into the the red that's at the point of that triangle of six. Be unlucky not to be on a ball. Seven. It looks as if it's going to be a second consecutive frame that Steve Davis has gotten, got in first and scored enough to win it. Fifty-three. Seventy-five enough the last time and uh, Ebden having to watch his opponent fashion another frame winning contribution. Sixty-one. Just a red and a colour. Well, as long as the colour's pink or black. But deciding that as long as he got a nice angle on the blue, he would get a red to follow. Blue to go 67 points in front with only 67 left. So the red will leave Peter Ebden needing a few snookers and what a 67. tremendous performance this is from Steve Davis. I thought the ninth frame was really Six important to him. I thought he had to win that frame. But he just couldn't get on the last red. Peter Ebden potted the last red, cleared up with a 35 to win by one point. 7-2 down. I thought, well, maybe is this the end of the challenge? 73. Nothing of the sort. He just got stronger. In the 80s, we never knew whether Steve Davis was any good in adversity because he hardly ever was. He was winning a high proportion of the tournaments that he was playing in. But uh, as his career has gone into decline, he's shown what tenacity and resource he has when he's up against it. <coughs> Eighty. Eighty-one. 
Yes, and it's got to be said for all youngsters watching, the technique is still just as good. Keeps the head down, nice pause, pushes the cue through straight. And 88. that's hard to do when the pressure's really on. It was a technique he honed over the years with hours and hours of practice. And that's what stands him in good stead in situations like this. Ninety-six. Second century of the session. 102. One hundred and four. To add to his hundred and four in the first frame this morning. One hundred and seven. All 15 reds Davis has taken in this break. Steve Davis for 116 in the frame. A pink and black short of a total clearance, but a superb effort of 116 enables him to narrow the gap to only two. Peter Edwin's lead reduced to 7-5. And that was a little bit of a landmark, the 250th century of Steve Davis' remarkable career. So now he only trails by seven frames to five, and we'll have some more snooker for you a little later on. But uh, immediately after the news, it'll be back to Ascot. Anything that easy, but there's still plenty of snooker left in this frame. That was a good shot, snookering Ebden on the red, on the bolt cushion, and leaving him unable to do anything with the one left of picture. He was trying to make him move one of the two <laughs> safest reds. But that was a good tactical reply from Ebden. Foul and a miss for Peter Ebden. The miss awarded because the uh, danger area for Davis with this escape would have been going across this red and leaving it to the right corner. Okay. Foul and a miss for Peter Well, this Ebden. is amazing. These are eight valuable points he's given away. It's not that difficult, Snooker. And eight points he can't really afford. He's now gone. And of course, he's explaining to him that if he doesn't <coughs> make contact with the red this time, he'll forfeit the frame because he can hit the red that's near the far left corner pocket. So playing for this one, maybe forced into the pot as well. 
Mm, that was close. Hello. Hello. <laughs> One. And look at this. He given eight points away. It wasn't the red he wanted to play. And in the end, the referees forced him into playing it. What a bit of luck, and could that turn this frame around? 38 points behind, but he's at the table and on a colour. I was just thinking of the three misses and out rule. Steve Davis was the first player to lose a frame when that uh, rule came into play against Ken Doherty in the Irish Masters in, in a deciding frame at that. Yes, and of course we saw Ken Doherty do exactly the same Three. the other day. That's one of the safe reds brought out by Steve with the cannon off the yellow. But it's these two awkward reds down the right-hand cushion now that are going to be the problem. But from nowhere, a chance. Four. Now, can he pop the pink and run into one of those two reds? Thirty-five points in it. So he's got plenty of points to play with. I wonder what's going on in that snooker brain. Obviously, doesn't appear to have the angle on the pink, and he's just really checking to see whether these six points are valuable enough. They are. He needs them. So he couldn't get position on a red. And now just... Ten. A good safety. Needed. Steve Davis, 10. Well, he snookered. Oh, I'm not certain if Peter can get through to this red near the black spot, but that's worked out to be an excellent safety shot from Steve Davis. 29 points in front, Peter Ebden, but he's got to be careful here. Red can't go in, but it can go over the pocket. Now, what's the position like on the colour? It's not bad. Davis develops 
the last word. Eight. And gives himself a chance to take the last frame of the session. And what a big shot this is. Looks to have an angle on the pink to run up for the yellow. Big frame. Big moment in the match, I feel this. Fifteen. Well, he's made a few mistakes, but you admire the way Steve Davis has responded. Four colours away from levelling the match, which seemed so unlikely when Steve was 7-2 behind. And we were talking, 24. Clive, how he was going to get back in the match, and we really couldn't see a way, could we? No, but this is how... It seemed as if his challenge was flaking away. Yeah. But in these last five frames, he's played like an old master restored. Yeah. Steve Davis trailed 7 2 and 50 0 but cleared up with 73 in that frame to initiate a five-frame winning streak, which brings him level at seven all. Yes, what a terrific session for Steve Davis, these two... Looking forward to tonight, we've got uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan uh, coming into the action in his second round match against Darren Morgan. Uh back it was really vintage Davis tremendous snooker and he pulled back winning five in a row to begin tonight all square at seven all well tonight the Davis run continued to lead eight frames to seven here's frame 16 as we join it nothing scored yet this is Davis at the table it's Clive Everton and John Virgil telling us all about it One. It rattled a bit, but it went in. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Play 
sorry for the red at the top of the cluster. Come into the cue ball too much near the cushion. Makes this pot more difficult. This match has gone on, has looked stronger and stronger. He's won six consecutive frames. <coughs> 48. Refused to take the chance to go into that cluster of reds. <coughs> Thought he'd pick off the loose ones first, but it's gone wrong. He thought that he would be on the red in Bork in such a way that he could pot it. But he's near enough to it to play a very good safety. Steve Davis, 48. Good break, but he'd be disappointed it ended as it did. It was a break, though, which has increased the amount of time that Peter Ebden has been away from the table. Ebden has been kept sitting down for long periods. And I'm not sure, in those circumstances, whether that pot wasn't a little on the venturesome side. What he needs, of course, is a sequence of easy shots to get himself going. One. Straighter on the blue than he wanted to be. Pot the blue off the side cushion to open the bunch. That was the strategy there. all else fails get near enough to the next red to make the safety shot easy yes he could take this red on and play it as a shot for nothing but decided against that Steve Davis but six he lost control of that red and he's very lucky to have covered it that wasn't one of his best safety shots but at the moment, as always seems to happen, when one man is playing better than the other, he gets the run of the balls as well. That's the way it was this morning when Ebden was winning. Touching ball. Played to snooker, Ebden on the loose red.
Well, it was lucky for Ebda that the black finished there. I was rather surprised that he didn't take that opportunity to play safe off the bunch. He's 54 behind after all. It'll be interesting to see how Steve plays this. And if he plays off this pack of reds below the pink, he's going to open them up, which he doesn't really want to do. And in an effort not to break them too much, caught it too thin, caught the bump, chance for Peter Ebden. possibility of a plant but I don't think that's necessarily what his next shot will be but it's nice to know they're there for later Seven. That plant looks smack on. On the black, there is another spot available, which will be the brown spot. Because I think there's a red covering the black spot, but if the black can go up on the brown spot, then you just have to concentrate on pink and blue. Shouldn't be a problem. Peter Ebden, 15. Not the sort of pot that Ebden was missing earlier in the match. He's under pressure and feeling it. Yes, and of course he's playing just the man who will take advantage of those type of lapses.
one. Seven. Good pot. Wrong side of the blue. Just has to avoid a cannon on one of the bolt colours here. Well, is that cue ball going to bounce? Well. Not enough. Quick glance at the scoreboard. There you see it. 51 points ahead, 59 on the table. So he was just looking for one more red, which may determine Steve playing this into the right center. One red, and Peter Abdon will need a snooker. If he plays this red, it will be a shot for nothing. The only red he could leave is the one he's playing. It's got to be worth it. a goal, surely. As long as he gets it past the pocket. Steve Davis, 12. It's always going to be safe. And was always going to make Ebden's safety to the ball cushion just a little more problematical. <laughs> Excellent. Wow, what a pot that was. One. He was playing it, the only red he could leave was the one he was playing, but tucked under the top cushion like that. Great pot. Could be just the sort of pot to get him going. be if Ebden could complete a clearance here. 7-2 up and 50 to nil. He found himself this evening down 8-7 <coughs> and 50 odd to nil but if he can snatch this frame with a clearance it could be another tide turner. Perfect on the blue. And A 30. nicely on this red below the pink. And the other red is available into the right center. He's just checking on the points, but 38 points behind. He's got plenty of points to play with a possible 43 on the table so these two reds two blues would be enough
14. Like to have been straighter on this delicate little shot required here and off this red he needs at least a blue to be able to win narrow angle into the pocket big shot coming up There's one problem coming up. Earlier on in this frame, he potted the black. He wouldn't go on his own spot. It went on the brown spot. So the brown is only available for the far right corner. So it's not a formality. This yellow easy, 26 points behind, 27 on the table. Six colours to win by one point. Straight on the green would have been no good. Needs an angle to get on the brown. Thirty. Starting to look good now. Thirty-four. <coughs> Thirty-nine. Well, Steve went for the red that he needed to win the frame. Didn't think he was leaving this, I'm certain. Come on! 52 Titanic 52 clearance. Peter Ebden levels at eight all. Where does he go at the end of one of those frames? There was no sign earlier on of this being a long match. There is now. Into the next, Davis has already had the opening red.
mischief's that badly now does the red just above the black go i know there's another one goes but if the one just above the black will go this is perfect for steve davis it does one careless shot from peter Twenty-one. Well, amazing. Just seems to run on and run on. Uh, it's finished, really. In no man's land. He's still got this red on, but work to do with the cue ball. Which he's done perfectly. 22. To be certain of being on the next red, he's going to have to cannon in the cluster here. He's thinner on the black than he would have liked. He can't play for loose reds. Those two reds just to the left of the pink are probably the ones he'll stun into. But you always need a little bit of luck here. Tempted to play for a loose red. 37. For me, that was the easy way out. But maybe <coughs> he didn't want to trust to luck. And that's what you do, as I said, when you go into a cluster. But he's run out of position. Good recovery pot that was. Forty-three. Forty-four. With the exception of one match in the Masters, the form that Davis has shown us in the last few frames has been Easily his best of the season. 49. Whenever he gets an opportunity at close quarters, he's scoring very <coughs> heavily. couple of the end reds I think that are potable into the center pockets and he had a chance earlier to go in the cluster didn't want to risk it 
that time. We don't need to. That's all he needs. Red colour and one more red. Maybe that's proof that he made the right decision before. As you see, 66 points ahead, 67 on the table, but nothing easy. And we know what happened in the last frame. Yes, he looked as if he was going to go two frames clear. But Ebden cleared up the 52 to win on the black. Well, a chance to do that now. Great pot. Peter Ebden needs a couple of snookers now. Green ball. Steve Davis, 66. Which should enable him to recapture the lead at 9 8. Well, Dave has sat and watched Ebden come out and pot a couple of balls, more in hope than anger, but then he gave up. So, yes, it's Davis leading 9-8. The last they play before their interval tonight, and as we join it, Ebden's already on a very useful break. He's 34 points up and still in play. This is a break. Concentrating on the pink and the modern day players, I think, are just so good at these middle, little pocket pots. Of course, with these fine cloths, they, they don't drift as much as they used to. They're just staying straight at the pocket. But it's always a narrow angle. But they hit them so accurately. The reds to play for. Just screwing the cue ball back four or six inches. Forty one. Well, has he screwed it too much? That looks like. The other red would have gone, but no, he's okay on this red. 42. He had another pink into the centre. Peter won't mind what colours they are, as long as he's getting rid of the reds and building up a frame-winning lead. This is uncomplimenting him on that middle back potting. He misses one. Thank you. No more shouting, please. Best opportunity this for Steve Davis as Peter Ebden <coughs> took most of the nice open reds. Tricky shot this to miss Brown or the green. Oh, just going to develop the black. He'll settle for that. Seven. On the red along the top cushion. Not much work to do with the cue ball. Black is now available. That was a result. Eight. Until Ebden missed on 42, he seemed to be going strongly for nine all.
unexpected miss to the middle pocket. Has given Davis a chance to get back into this frame and possibly go on to win it and take a two frame lead at 10 8. for Steve is he's got this red in the left corner but there's a couple of reds near the right cushion he's got to try and he was more interested Steve in Davis. the cannon 15. took his eyes off the pot now we'll have no more shouting out please well the crowd getting excited yes it's not like boxing where the crowd can really let themselves go. It's impossible to play this game unless uh, they're allowed full concentration on the shot. Well, it doesn't look as though the red into the left corner will go. Playing the red either into the far left or the left middle. But the two reds the cue ball's very close to look very much like a plant to me. Peter can't play them. But if he misses the red, Steve Davis will. So if he's going for this, he needs to get it. heard him say to himself come on come on I think I also heard him say to himself as the red went in and I've never heard a player say it before that was a great shot he was right plant into this corner pocket that's what made this the red into the left center such a good shot because he knew that if he missed it he'd have been leaving this for Steve so it's a brave shot to take on and they're not exactly set but there's a gap so he can make it easily enough and nicely on the black 34 point lead. Seven. Still needs black, red colour, and one more red to be certain. Checking the scoreboard, 41 points in front. There's still a possible 59 left, so as I say, he needs red colour, red, to be safe. <laughs> Develop the red, and uh, always knew that he was going to have reasonable position on a colour. Yes, I think we may see Peter play the pink in this left corner pocket and go up for that red in the bulk end. He's looking at the blue, but I don't really see the, the correct angle on that. Pink looks to be the ball to me. He could play for the red near the right cushion, of course. Colour and one more red required.
21. Well, that should clinch it. 22. And, well, a good performance, I feel, Clive. He's playing Steve Davis at the top of his game. He's dug in, and he'll be happy with sharing the first four frames. Couldn't agree more. 27. Twenty-eight. They started this session at seven all. Twice Peter Ebden fell the odd frame behind. First he needed to make a 52 clearance for the black ball win. 35. Which prevented him falling two behind. And he's played another sterling frame here. Peter Ebden, 35. And the frame. Nine all at the mid-session interval. <coughs> Great match. Seven to play, 13 a target for the last place in the semi-final. So here's the situation here in the Embassy Championship. Stephen Hendry plays Nigel Bond as he did in last year's final. Roddy O'Sullivan waits to see whether it's Davis or Ebden at the interval nine all. It's the vintage Davis versus the explosions of Ebden. Well, they're plugging old Des Lynham into the trickle charger now on BBC One. They'll be opening up in Sports Night in about five minutes' time with a spot of football as well. Sounds like a good programme. Think I might watch it. For me, goodbye. Final between Steve Davis. His last World Championship win was back in 1989. And Peter Ebden, the man who edged out Jimmy White. It's first two 13 frames at this stage, you'll recall. Uh, we join it at nine all. Ebden is about to play, but he's 27 nil down. And the commentary comes from John Virgo and Clive Everton. One. Just getting up off the shot, late arrival after the mid-session interval. And doing the right thing, get up, start all over again. Because he played a careless positional shot, the shot before, two straight on the black. I don't want this red or go in the left centre, no. It's the far left corner. Good shot. But Nine. Only the red near the right hand cushion looks to be available. Don't know if he'll go into this pack of reds. Maybe a lot of pace right on side if he does. Brave shot to take on. What's the result, though? 17. Well, that was a pot and half. That was perfect on the black. Look at this striking down to 
be so precise. Not only the red went in, perfect on the black. Tremendous shot. What a miss. Peter Ebden, 17. <laughs> Well, it's hard to explain. After the red, how can he miss the black? He's playing it with a lot of power, run into the cluster, took his eye off the pot. One. Hurdle to red there. But as long as it wasn't the first ball, that didn't matter. Not a foul. <coughs> Davis couldn't know where the cue ball was going. straight blue and uh, this is useful now straight Five. brown I think it was Clive but I think we've seen that a, a bit from Steve Davis today I mean it's a type of brown where some matches you may see him look at it not think percentage it was the shot to play but he's never refused an opportunity in this match particularly today to go for a ball which he thinks could be a frame winner if he got it and that brown certainly could be six that wasn't as played no tough blue coming up Questioned his attitude when he played the brown. With that in mind, I'll be surprised if he doesn't take the blue on. It's a pressure ball, but once again, it's a type of shot. If he pots it, gets on a red, it's a frame winner. Working out options. Will he think the blue's the shot? <laughs> Clean as a whistle. And there was pressure on that. Cued it well. Eleven. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Pink going on a black spot. Won't affect Steve at all. Thirty-two points in front. 
for three of these reds. Just two required with colours. This opportunity presented to Davis when Ebden spotted a couple of good balls but then missed a black from its spot. points in front, just one red, leave these red and needing snookers. And boy is he taking these well. Thanks. Never flinched once with any hard shot that he had to play. Got down, treated it as a frame winning chance and took it. Davis is going to go the odd frame in front. heard one or two people before the start of this match writing Steve Davis off. I think they'll have to read the words, don't you, Clive? Definitely. 69. They may have thought they were right when Davis trailed 5-1 overnight. 75. But he's going well now. Yeah. Well, yeah. 82 in the frame, clearance of 82. His sixth break over 50. Since uh, the middle of this morning when he was 72 <laughs> down, puts him ahead, 10-9. We will move swiftly on to the next frame. Davis is behind here, 27 points to 38, but he's at the table again. Well, the point of that shot was to leave Ebden snookered on the two reds on the balk line, if he could. Don't think he can do much with the other two. Couldn't get the cue ball to the cushion behind the black as it happened and is very fortunate that the red he's played has finished there. Otherwise Davis would have had a pot onto the left middle with easy pink to follow. He 
Yes. Steve can get through, though, to the red near the port line, just above the yellow. And the only red he'd be leaving was the one he was playing. And if it should go in... Not far away. Ebden to get the cue ball behind the black here. Because playing one red onto another in that manner, the first red was going to remain in more or less the same position, and without the snooker, it was going to be potable to left middle. Good shot. The only red that Davis can see full ball is the one on the ball line. Playing to that red via the bought cushion, intending to leave the cue ball on the cushion. Yes, calculated risk. Knew he'd be leaving the red into the far right corner. Made it as difficult as he could. He couldn't get it safe, not completely safe. Calculated risk. But Peter will take this on. Wave of acknowledgement. Tough shot. Hit it too full. Hit both jaws. Into middle. Well, he took a calculated risk, and he was he was right for about ten seconds. Reminds me of a quip that. Ray Reardon once made in an exasperated moment about Alex Higgins. I can stop him potting, but I can't stop him fluking. Close to Brown, Fine. couldn't do a lot with the cue ball. But of course. It's all a bonus now for Peter with the fluke. Can he take advantage of it? Six. Tried to move a second red to a better position, knowing he'd be on the pink. to go 23 points in front so he still needs both these reds and as you see they couldn't be worse placed have got any better position for this difficult red from there got to 
be careful. No, he's a long way from it. Thirteen. Still needs the colour and one more red. And what Italian flute that could be. And this time, the attempt to develop the red succeeds. Ebden was lucky to start this contribution with a fluke. But he has played some good shots to make the best of that luck. Oh, yes. The run of the ball is very important in this game. It comes and goes. Some days you have it, some frames you have it, some frames you don't. When you get it, take advantage, and that's exactly what Peter's done. So, just the red. Nineteen. So, for the third time in this session, Ebden is going to level the match at ten all. A vital frame, a thirty minute frame of great safety, great duelling. So much skill, and yet luck could be said to have played the decisive role. Twenty-two. It gave Ebden his frame-winning chance in this frame. It was a difficult 24. chance. There were two reds very awkwardly situated under cushions. 27. But Ebden got perfectly on one and developed the other. 31. a bit of exuberance. 35. Letting himself go a bit. Steve Davis six. And perhaps he's Steve entitled Davis to. And he gave it all in that frame and has levelled the ten all. Well not only that, but Ebden eased through the next two frames as well for a 12-10 lead, so the former world champion very much up against it here. Let's join the start of frame 23. Ebden makes the first safety mistake of the 23rd frame. One. I believe two up with three to play is the most deceptive lead in snooker. Win the first of those frames, and you're within a frame. Seven. Win another, and you're level. Eight. 
quite a large number of matches are won from such a deficit. Closest to, I do believe, is the red he played for, and he's not played it well. A 14. Tried to drop the pink in dead weight, but he just overhit it. So, still playing this red, but the position on the colour, a little bit more difficult. I'm interested to see what Steve Davis can do with this chance. Oh, that was a delightful shot. Delightful. If he could make a frame winning break here, he'd certainly stand him in good stead and really put the pressure on Peter Ebden. Steve Davis, 15. Bad miss. Pretty straight to middle, but put it on the near jaw. I didn't hear a kick, but maybe the circumstantial evidence in the referee, Alan Chamberlain, cleaning the cue ball. It doesn't matter to Peter Ebden. referee reproving a talkative member of the audience. Going slightly away from the Reds, he takes blue. But uh, position from pink Six. wasn't that easy to control, so Ebden preferred to leave himself this middle distance red. Seven. Played that well. Got a nice angle on the blue. It's not straightforward though because the black's out of commission. Pink's up over the far corner pocket, but he won't want to risk playing for the pink. He'd have to come all the way back down here for a red. So concentrating on the blue, it's all right as long as you finish up with a nice angle. Twelve. That's not perfect. <coughs> Thirteen. sip of water. He 
knows the next shot is the big one. Gonna play the pink in the far right corner pocket. It's in contact. To travel a fair distance after hitting the pink. Needs to be good on the next red. It's not straightforward. Played to leave himself straight red to right corner. The one 19. second right of picture, but has finished short of that. Well, I've got to agree with you, the speed he played it, but I can't believe he wanted to leave himself a long red. Not at this stage of the match. Could have hit that pink thinner and come down this end. Only a safety shot left. Trebden, 19. And even though the black was tied up, that was a good chance. I expected him to get more than that. Developed to black and has immaculate length. to Bork. The only shot I can see is Peter playing the red on the right-hand side of the table and trying to get the cue ball in the jaws of the right corner. Well, he's trying to pass back to Bork. This is a tough shot. Oh, and very fortunate. Very fortunate indeed. Hit it too thin, kiss the black. Could have gone anywhere. Left it difficult for Steve, even though there is a red on. Cool. He made it look easy, One. but it wasn't. Steve Davis, one. That was easier. And it could be an important error. on the black. I'm not certain black, black will go on the spot. If it does, of course, this is a frame and match winning chance. on its own spot so not as straightforward as it might have been pink's not available to go up for the blue off this red
Nein. Fourteen. I've been looking for the best way to solve this little puzzle around the pink spot. If he can, he'll win the match from it. Fifteen. <coughs> Davis now looks defeat squarely in the face. Yes, at this level you need to be focused. It's been a long day and I, I can't help thinking maybe it's just a sort of mental tiredness that's just let him down at the end. I wouldn't put it down to missing balls because of the pressure. I think he's coped with that over the years. But they've been long, hard frames, and I think it's just caught him out at the vital time. And there's one of the young guns of the game. <laughs> We've got it all to prove against a man who has nothing to prove. 21. Peter Ebden, twice a world quarter finalist in his four visits to the Crucible. Twenty-two. On the verge of his first semi-final. Yes, and you can't begrudge him that place in the semi-final when Steve Davis hit peak form. Lots of other players have crumbled. We know that in the past, and particularly in the 80s. But he dug in. He never lost his self-belief. And he's getting his just rewards. 28. Ebden led 5-1 overnight and 7-2 early this morning. He lost six frames in succession. 24. Twice more. Davis led by the odd frame. 34. The last time 10-9. But Ebden has taken the last three frames and is about to stretch his winning streak to four. Thirty-five. Just the pink to leave Steve Davis needing a snooker. There you see it, 44 ahead, 43 on the table, easy red to follow. I doubt whether Steve Davis will be getting out of his chair, but he certainly left an impression, Steve, on this tournament. Forty-two. <coughs> it's 
Steve Davis, six times champion, twice runner-up at the Crucible, three times a semi-finalist. 49. But tonight he becomes twice a losing quarter-finalist. Led by 10 frames to 9. But Peter Ebden came through with a match winning four frame streak to go through to the semi finals. Winner by 13 frames to 10.